Welcome into Softball Talk Season 2, Episode 6. Coach, we're back in the saddle, just you and I. Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't have a, a guest this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but look, we had a uh, fabulous guest last week. Yeah, shout out to Ava Reinhardt for doing that. And I know that, um, you know, it's tough to put yourself out there, especially as a young athlete, um, to do that, to make yourself vulnerable, to, you know, show your cards, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was really awesome that she did that. And I know you got a lot of feedback in the facility. I did. You know, a lot of people were like, you know, just asking me questions about her and talking about how good she did on there and uh, talking about the things that she does. And one of the dads was like, so what does she do in her spare time or downtime? And I looked at him and I was like, she don't have any downtime. <laughs> it was funny because she was in there hitting uh, the other day and I was kind of telling her that. And I said, yeah, one of the dads asked me what you do in your, your downtime. And she's like, I don't have any. Right. She's like, I, I'm going constantly. 24-7. Basically, my downtime is Sunday night, me and my mom meal prep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That, that's considered my downtime. Right. You right. Know? So. Yeah. So uh, a special shout out to Ava uh, for doing that, making yourself vulnerable. Um, it, you know, as a young lady that just shows her mat- maturity to be able to come in here and do that and, and talk to us and, and hopefully – you know, give parents out there or, or players out there, coach, you know, the path or, or at least some blueprints of the routes they could go if they want to really go at it hard with yeah. the college thing. Yeah. I wanted to, to kind of piggyback off of that into Nate Bryan from uh, Nate in Sports on Twitter on X uh, retweeted something and it kind of caught my eye. And coach, I got to be honest with you. I mean, it was it was tough for me to swallow um, for a couple reasons, but I'll just throw it out there. Uh, number one pitcher for Frederick Douglass in Lexington chooses travel ball instead of KHSA spring season. Yeah. Now I'm sure that that has happened in the past that players have foregone their uh, high school season to play travel ball, um, but. Coach, I got to be honest with you. I don't get it. Yeah, I, you know, I had a couple of people, you know, send that to me, and they're like, "What do you think about this?" You know, I, I've got, you know, I don't know. Um, is there more to it? Yeah, the, that's my question. Is there? There's got to be two sides to the story. One, two. I, I don't understand. You know, I get it. So they're saying that she plays a, in a, on a Georgia team. Their their high school season is in the fall, but even still, though, what colleges are going to come watch you because it's their season? Well, that that's, so why travel? Why are you going to? What are you doing? That's exactly the, the the point I made. I said, you know, EC Cobb Bullets, I believe, is who she plays yeah. for, uh, or who she's going to go play for. Yeah, and, and look, it's a good organization. They yeah. are. Um, but at the end of the day, that's exactly what I said. If you're trying to get reps, like I doubt you guys are going to be practicing every day. Uh, the other Correct. thing is, is what tournaments are you going to go play? So you're looking at flying around the country. Yeah. Spending more money. And then lastly, but college coaches are on the field. Right. Coaching right now. Mm-hmm. Like, right. They're what, not- like what are you – going to gain mm-hmm. by doing this and the other thing is is man you know playing for your high school team is is gives you a chance to be with your friends and yeah and you know the pride of competing for your high school yeah and trying to win a state title for your high school mm-hmm. and you know i mean that, that says a lot and so that's why i say is there more to it yeah, and, you know, let's talk about some of the positives, you know, for, for high school ball. You know, one true champion, just like basketball, there is no classes. Right. You know, in in, in KHSA softball, for people that do not know, um, Kentucky High School Athletic Association, we use that acronym a lot, KHSA. Um, but there's only one class. So it's, it's, you know, all or nothing, you know, one true champion, That's the right. way it should be, right? Yeah. Um, that has it going for it. Frederick Douglass is a big school. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, they're they're going to play some big teams in Lexington, I know. I didn't pull up their schedule, but I'm sure. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty tough. Uh, there's got to be more to the story. Yeah. Uh, because I don't get it. I mean, she's going to play a 16U team. Um, you know, I mean, if it was an 18U team, like a last crack to get recruited, I guess. I don't know, but – at the same time, you know, too, Coach, we got to look at it like this as well. Um, you know, yes, you could play in, in college, but at, at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to fly around the country, is it – what are you getting out of it? Because you're going to be much better just going to the camps and, and making yourself seen. And we all know that summer is the, the premier time that colleges are out at these showcases. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to spend that kind of money mm – -hmm. Um, to go do those tournaments, it's going to be in the summer. Yeah. I'm not spending that kind of money during a high school season where no college coaches are going to be there. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't know. Maybe they send a few assistant coaches out to look at some kids. I don't know how – what they actually do during their season, uh, how that works, if they actually have some one person that they say, hey, there's a tournament down there. Uh, you know, we got a game this weekend, but I need you to head down there. I don't know. But, you know, what, what about – I mean, from what I understand, she was the number one pitcher Yeah, for I, Frederick I, Douglass. Yeah, I'm not okay? sure. So, yes. I don't know. I mean, did you just leave your teammates high and dry? Yeah. Because that schedule is not easy. Yeah. I don't, and I don't, the coach, you know, did, did you just – you know, now he, he built this schedule – expecting you to be his number one pitcher and now you're not i would say that there's got to be more to the story there has to be I, i'm hoping or i'm hopeful that uh if if someone out there knows more than than coach jb or i um it, please let us know shoot us an email coach in the fan at gmail.com uh or message us on twitter x uh we would love to know more of the story um and, and you know we could be completely wrong maybe it was uh who knows? Uh, but best of luck, I guess, to, to her. Uh, yeah. I hope it works out. Uh, and I hope, you know, at some point maybe she finds her way back into the KHSA because um, as a parent, I think it's extremely important. I think it's a big deal. Um, it's it's set up for success the way that they've done this. Um, so I, I, th I think it's a good thing. Coach, moving on, we talked about district realignment, you and I. Yeah. Uh, on the last episode, yep, uh, or two episodes ago, mm -hmm. uh, Jason Franks Franks with uh, Kentucky Highs, the Courier Journal, uh, here in Louisville, uh, tweeted this out last week. I'm at the meeting of Metro Louisville athletic directors. They have voted to form a committee that will address realignment for the sixth and seventh regions. KHSAA has suggested. Realignment could be coming for the 25-26 school year. So, yeah. So, and, and that, I also heard that too. The realignment is only looking at sixth and seventh region. Correct. We're not. They're not. They're not going to touch a lot of the other stuff in, throughout the state. Yes. So they're going to realign the sixth and seventh region, which which could be some big changes. Yeah, and I mean, what I hear, and this is what I've heard, is bullets going to go to the fifth. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, um, so that'll get bullet East out of our, Which, uh, you know, either way, but again, that means we're going to gain some people. Right. Right. So, you know, it is what it is. I know there's some, some schools that have, have changed locations. Yeah. Uh, Portland Christian moved. There's a few others that have moved. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe that plays into that, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's also some things with the district that I've I've said for years that I thought needed to be looked at. Um, there's a few districts that only ha that basically only have two teams. Yeah, in in uh, not to sorry, coach. Um, something that I've heard is that um, our regions, the sixth and seventh, are so large. Yeah. That we can afford to lose teams. Yeah. And we're still comfortable because when you go out in the state and you look at some of these other regions, yeah, we have as many in some districts, it seems like. Absolutely. I'm our, we have five teams in our district. Correct. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, 
I don't know if there has to be as much shaking from the 6th to 7th, maybe. Maybe it's just a matter of smoothing things over and um, and working it that way to where we just lose the bullet teams and then maybe a couple filter down to the six that have moved. So, you know, at the end of the day, we will see. I appreciate Jason for putting it out there, uh, and we will keep you updated as we see it because it, it could happen. I mean, we right now we have we have 16 teams in our region. Correct. 16. In the sixth region. In the sixth region. Yeah. Um, I don't know what. Well, I can. Well, I can tell you. Um, and that's for softball. So there, there are a handful of schools that do not that participate maybe in basketball. And let's just be honest. This realignment is for basketball. They, I mean, it's oh, not yeah, for yeah, softball. Yeah. yeah. So seventh region has fifteen teams. Okay. So they're packed. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of regions out there that have ten. So. Um, yeah, let's just be honest that, that the sixth and seventh can afford to lose some, mm-hmm. um, now at the same time, I understand why that they have so many, we have a lot in this area. Um, but I think at the end of the day, coach, we're going to see, uh, hopefully it works out for the best for everyone. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, I, I talk about the districts, you know, there, there's some that only have two teams now. Yeah. The, the thing that aggravates me about that is, is you know, win or lose, both of those teams get to move on to the regionals. Correct. We have five teams. Correct. So, you know, yeah, that, does that seem fair? And, and a lot of times, Coach, you have three teams that are, that you know, are quality teams that would, uh, right you know, that deserve to be there. Yes. Or, or let's just say they have a, they, a real possibility versus – we're in automatically. It doesn't matter whether it's we win, bit, win or lose that championship game. You yeah, know, a little bit here, ridiculous. here we're, we've so in our district we play three three days. Yeah, and this other district they play one day. Yeah, one championship game. Yeah, and, and that's it. win or lose, they both move on. Correct. You know, so yeah, I think some of that needs to be even out. And look, I'm not saying that there's only two teams in that district. Yes. But, so, because of basketball and the way that all that lines up, correct. There's a couple of teams in there that just don't have. They, they don't feel the. They don't feel the softball team correct. or refuse to play. Correct. And we've that. seen that so, too. Yeah, as well. I'm not saying there's only two teams in there. Right. But um, what I'm saying is, is w- that has to be even out. Yes, and yeah. that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, I do want to move on. So, tryouts are this week. Oh yeah, Monday tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. So we're filming this on Super Bowl Sunday. Is it? Is it supposed to? Is the rain gonna hold off tomorrow? Oh, I did don't you, know. Did you make that call? I did. I, I mean, I'm thinking worst case you're going parking lot. You don't no, care. I'll go to turf. Yeah. Okay. Turf. Let's go. Um, it's a, so it's a super exciting time for all of our listeners out there. I mean, regardless of what team you are, um, I did coach. Excitingly, you added a second scrimmage to your to your schedule this year, which is great. Um, and and so we're just going to kind of jump through a couple things that we've talked about in the past um, and, and two of the teams that you're scrimmaging. Um, first, on March the 5th, Meade County. Yeah. Now they're coming to Mercy. Yep. Uh, Meade County, big softball supporting school. I mean, mm-hmm. they have a huge team. Yeah. Uh, great coaching, great players in the past. Um Coach, I will say this: um, they did lose four pretty significant players last year. Yeah, Riley Webb, who had eight home runs; uh, Annabelle Noop, who had six; Tiffany Steels, who had three; and then Gracie McCoy didn't have any home runs, but she batted three hundred. Oh yeah, so she, I think she was in the top four or five of their team. Yeah, so they lost some big power hitting. Yeah, what they do have though is their pitcher Kylie Wiles. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a senior, so she has, you know, she's been through it. Yeah. Through a 2.2, um, ER, or, yeah. Two, ERA. ERA, mm-hmm. 103 strikeouts. She went nine and four. Yeah. Had 91, 91 innings pitched. Yep. And I believe we saw her, didn't we? We did. Coach? We did. Yeah. And so, uh, great mechanics, good pitcher. Um, now let's just kind of move over to, you know, what they have coming back. Um, they have Miller coming back who had a three ninety six batting average mm-hmm. and then Ledford, 
mm-hmm. an absolute stud on the plate. 347 at 72 at bats, only struck out nine times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so he lost some. He it looks like he lost some power, but he it, he didn't lose a whole lot on consistency. Yeah, he's got some girls that are going to get in there and put the bat on the ball. Right. Um. So it should be a good time. Um. We'll see. Um. Yeah, I mean, I know that they always are competitive, so it doesn't matter, you know, what he's lost or came back with. They're always a competitive team. Mm-hmm. They will travel to Mercy for the scrimmage, and they will be cheering, and they will be loud. Oh, yeah. Their parents will be loud. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, the the best part is is you're going to treat it like a game day. Yeah. And and uh, it is what it is, and we'll try it and see how it goes, see what happens. Um, yeah, so all good. Um, next uh, scrimmage will be that Saturday. Yeah. We're going down to Caldwell County. Mm-hmm. Coach Seath Butts down there. Yep. Um, Coach, I know you've been looking forward to this. You penciled this in months ago. Um, Seath's got some pretty good talent. He's young, Coach. He is. He's young. Uh, but, I mean, hey, he's still hitting him out of the park, including his daughter. Yeah. Uh, Briley, um, third baseman. I think she plays third and short from what I've read. Uh, had four home runs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adley Lewis, utility player, also throws some, also pitches some, I believe, five home runs, and then Harper Holdman, their second baseman, eight home runs. Yeah. So, coach, no slouch. Um, you know, Maya and and Colebank are going to have to protect, you know, the middle of the plate and not let them get a hold of it. But I mean, coach, they had twenty six home runs last year. Yeah, and uh, again, very young team. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his roster right here, yeah, he's loaded with sophomores, freshmen. Yeah, um, sprinkle in a few juniors. Yeah, and sprinkle in a few seniors. Yeah, and he's got some eighth graders on here. Uh, he's young, but you know, I know Seath is down there putting them, put them to the grind. Yeah, he, he's working them. Yeah. Um, but it should be a fun trip. I've been excited about going down there. Correct. We're going to make a day of it. Yes. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're going to hang out with them and, and eat a little bit afterwards. And um, But, you know, I'm excited to get down there. I haven't seen Seath in a while. Um, talk to him every once in a while on the phone. He's a great guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to go down there and see what he's got. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you, Coach, for being gracious and reaching out to us and yeah. Coach and – and inviting us down there. Um, something else super exciting, Coach, and you let this out of the bag, I believe, um, to me the other day, is we got the Florida Beach Bash schedule. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just say, I don't know who puts together schedule RPI ratings. Now, I'm saying this as a fan. But your schedule has to be in the top five in the state of RPI. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Because here is our Florida Beach Bash. We start off opening game with, you know, a cupcake of Harrison County, who was your 10th region champ. Yep. Uh, lost to Central Harden yep. in the state tournament. They went 31-8. and eight. Yep. They had one senior. One senior bringing – the whole team pretty much back. Um, I believe it's Savannah Willett yeah. who had six home runs yep. with a slouch of a four fifty eight batting average. Yeah. So, Coach, we mm. got our work cut out for us down there. We do. Um, that's on day one. Day two, we see a, a team that we're also going to see down at the uh, – um, what's that tournament we're playing in down in Montgomery County? Um, it slipped my mind. Bart Rising. Thank you. We're gonna yeah. see Lafayette once again. Twenty-five and five, lost to Great Crossings in the eleventh region final. Yeah. Now I will say this, Coach. They had eight seniors. They did. But that being said, Jenna Wells, mm-hmm. a junior, batted four thirty-two with twenty-eight home runs. Twenty-eight. Yep. Yeah. Um. That's that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. 
Now, wait a minute. I don't think – I think Lafayette had 28 home runs. I don't Yeah, she, she didn't. She had – I can tell you exactly how many she okay. had. Okay, I think – uh, yeah, I think that – Yeah, uh, I think that was their total uh, yes. team. Yes, I believe so. Um, but I will tell you exactly what it is. But Lafayette is – they so they lost a great cross. I know I just said this, but they lost a great crossings in the eleventh region final. Now, I mean, great crossings, as we all know, is a fantastic team. Who also, while I'm on the subject, just took J- Jeffersonville's place in the Mercy Triangle. Yes. So now we have this, and this is, and we we'll, we got to put out a press release. I think Mercy does because you're going to have three of the best teams in the state all in one place. You're going to have Mercy, you're going to have Henderson County, and you're going to have Great Crossings. Yeah. Three teams from the state tournament uh, or regional tournaments, champs, uh, all in one place. Yeah. And uh, talk about exciting times, man. Coach, that was a huge ad. And another reason why I think your schedule is just insane, uh, you're going to find out a whole lot about this team. Yeah. Very quickly. You know, and uh, look, at the end of the day, um, this is, this is the competition we're going to see at the state. Yeah. So I, I, I've, I've talked to my girls. We had a uh, one-on-one meetings on Saturday yeah. to kick off the tryout. Um, and I, I just told every one of them, listen, this schedule is tough. Yeah. Okay. I did that for a reason mm-hmm. because I have, look, man, I, I got two. Two fantastic pitchers. Yeah. Okay. Maya Merrill, a senior. Yes. Olivia Colbank, a junior. So I have a righty and a lefty. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, having both of them healthy mm-hmm. is. Yeah, it's a great problem to have, Coach. Yeah. Um, and, and that being said, you know, they're, they're excited. They're ready for the season. They've got a tough task ahead. Now, I, we're both ex guys, but I do have to say this. You're taking the kind of the Trinity approach where you're going out and you're scheduling really hard, right? Yep. And you're, and you're finding out. And, and if you make it to the tournament and you're 15 and 12 or whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, at that because point. Because we yeah. just got to go 5-0. and 0. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're going to find out a whole lot about yourself. Um, because, you know, you have two great seniors. Um, I, I think you really are – you're putting yourself in a great spot for the season. Jenna Wells, 432 batting average, jumping back to yeah, Lafayette. Yeah, she only had one home run, had one but home she run. led her team at the plate. Fantastic hitter. Let me just say this, back-to-back tough games. I think then we get a day off. Yep. Then we bounce back with a team we really don't know a whole lot about – Except last year they hit 65 home runs in the Ohio Athletic Association. Yep. Lancaster, Ohio. They're called the Gales out of uh, Lancaster, Ohio. Um, super excited to see them. Hopefully, as their info gets released, we'll do a little more research on them, Coach. Yep. And no. Then this is the great part about this, and, and we're going to hear from people, you know, I can't believe y'all are going down to Florida to play Kentucky teams. Well, this is why. Mm-hmm. So we can play Johnson Central, yep. um, who made it to the Elite Eight of the KHSA tournament. Yep, uh, they beat the Highlands three to one, came back and lost a heartbreaker to Rowan County. Yeah, this team went twenty eight and ten. Coach, they had one senior, one senior. Um, the DeLong sisters, I believe, one's a senior, one's a junior. Randy. Had a 495 batting average with nine home runs and 53 RBIs. Now, she's the DeLong sister that's batting third. The fourth batter, Mason, her sister, is a sophomore coach, batted a 650. Yeah. With 14 home runs. Yeah. They're both returning. Yeah. They lost one player from last year. This team right here, they're pointing for that state tournament. Absolutely. They made a run last year. Mm-hmm. They felt it. They tasted it. Yep. Um, super pumped to, to see that team. Yep. Uh, because they're they are going to be locked in. They're going to be dialed in. They've got two sisters that are absolute studs. Uh, so super really looking forward to that. Coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the last game in there is Marshall County. Now, 
Um, we're Marshall County is, you know, near and dear to our hearts because a great player that plays on coach JB's travel team, um, also goes there and hopefully you'll get a chance to meet her at some point on the podcast. Um, now last year, Marshall County, 18 and 15 coach. They only had one senior. Yeah. They are super young. Yeah. Now, Allison Harris, who we're talking about is their pitcher. Now she had a. Coach, what is that? A two ninety three ERA, yeah, one hundred and sixty one strikeouts. But I mean, she had some seventh and eighth graders in the infield. Being yeah, her defense. I mean, again, yeah, what you know, her defense was very young behind her. Yeah, so you know, at that point, you're doing all you can do. You can't strike everybody out. Correct. So, but I look for them to be even better this year. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I mean, listen, they're down there with McCracken County. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're in a tough region, right? Yeah. And and I know McCracken, you know, hey, we own this. This is our region. I know they want to knock them off. Yeah, yeah. And in this tournament right here, this Fort My, or Fort Walton Beach thing is the perfect tune-up for them. It's the perfect tune-up for Mercy um, because – you want to you want to be the best. You have got to beat the best coach. And I know we've said that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know these are some great teams that we would not always have the opportunity to play. I mean, let's face it, Marshall County's down there towards Eddyville. I mean, way down there in the south. Yeah. Uh, Johnson Central not close. Lafayette could happen. Harrison County coach tenth region. I'm not exactly sure where they are located. But I'm super excited about this tournament because great competition, yeah. unlike Walt Disney World last year. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, or Myrtle yeah. Beach the year before when you steamrolled all those teams. Yeah. So you're you're gonna see some play. You're getting some great J V games in. Yeah. I because mean because all these schools are softball schools. Yeah. And they've got the following. Like a Mead County. Yeah, we're gonna play every one of their J V teams. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. And in these schools are big enough to where they probably carry a completely different. Who knows? I mean, they. Who knows? Um, I just think it's exciting that this has kind of come together like this. Yeah. And I know you as a coach have to be happy that you know it's going to get your players some exposure against the best. And, and we don't have to worry about you know like this Lancaster Ohio. We don't know much about them. No. But we know all about these other four teams. Yeah. And we know that they all compete. Yeah, and, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to say, why, why, why would you schedule Correct. Your, your schedule like that, yeah. you know, and maybe your record ends up being lopsided. Yeah. Okay, look, I don't care about in-season record right. at all. Yeah. You could go 0-36, mm-hmm. win your district and go to the state tournament mm-hmm. and finish the season out like 10 and – Yeah. 10 and 40, 10 and 38 or 10 Correct. and 40, whatever it is. Correct. And, and, and you're state champions. Yes. Don't, yeah. But at the end of the day, here's why I really did this. Mm-hmm. Look, my whole outfield is going to be brand new this year. Yes, it is. I've got some young kids out there. Mm-hmm. I've got some kids that haven't even played high school ball. You got one kid that didn't, that, uh, I don't even want to get into it. But, no. yeah, didn't play high school ball. Didn't even get a chance. Didn't get a chance. Um, and then I've got, you know, I've got some other kids that are going to be new at some positions mm-hmm. this year as well. Mm-hmm. So, I, I'm going to, you know, again, I've got to fill these kids out. But, you know, I've got, I've got young kids. Mm-hmm. So, I don't want it to be like it was a couple years ago when we made the trip down to Ulmer. And my kids were shell shocked. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put you to the test. Yeah, I'm going to make sure you're battle tested. Correct. So that when you walk into Omer or UAK or where, where, you know if we make it that far, mm-hmm. but I don't want you to be sitting over there nervous. And no, I'm going to put you against some very good teams to to make sure yeah. that where where are you at with this? Correct. Can you actually handle this? Mm-hmm. So I got to figure that out. Yeah. Um, but I tell you, Coach, I mean, it's turned out to be an exciting schedule, uh, a tough. Adding the great crossing team in there is exciting. Um, it, it It's really turned out to be a great thing. Um, looking forward to the season, Coach. I mean, hey, yeah. it's coming. 
tryouts. Your tryouts are what a two day tryout or how do you one do day you... one day? Okay, so one so day. So we'll go Monday and then we'll jump right into it on Tuesday. In, well, oh. I mean, we'll fire right into it, which is exciting. Yeah, and and then right around the corner in March we have uh, we have a couple um, scrimmages and then we go right back on that Monday opening day. We are at E Town. E Town, correct. Actually, E Town's at Mercy. E Town at Mercy. So that I mean, golly, it's coming quick, man. Yeah, and uh, you know the last time, so we didn't get to play E Town last year. Um, but I think we played them. I want to think it was two years ago, and do we? I, I I don't know. We just laid an egg against them. Yeah, like it was bad. Yeah, yeah kind of like when we played Woodford County yeah. at Woodford yeah. County. It just wasn't our. The only time that season, it just it started bad from the beginning, coach. Yeah, and then it it just never it could never kick off. Yeah, but you know, again, it's uh, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Yeah. Um. You know, the other reason why is because I'm confident in my pitchers. I got a lefty and a righty who threw almost identical stats last year. Yeah. So let's just to recap. You know, last year a little bit. Uh, Maya was uh, a little injured at the beginning of the season, uh, so Olivia Colbank, as a sophomore, stepped in. Coach, I mean, what nine and one? Yeah, to start the she, season. She finished out the season thirteen and three. Yeah, uh, lights out. Yeah, pitch great. Two point eight, two point six eight. And ERA. let's be honest, Coach, did you really expect that much success out of her, uh, putting that much on her shoulders? Well, no. Be, well, I I really didn't know because. Uh, you know, you got to remember she she just transferred in last year. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. she was another kid that was at another school and just didn't get no opportunities. Correct. And so I really didn't know because I didn't know a lot, a whole lot about her. But mm-hmm. I had talked to other people and they're like, "Look, man, she pitches for a travel ball team. She does really well. Yeah, you know, she moves the ball pretty good. So you know, hey, when she got up there and look I, I, again, you know, the loss against Henderson last year." You know, she pitched that game, but she also just pitched the game before that against Jeff. Yeah. Which I believe was an extra inning game. Yeah. Yeah. And then turn around and go against Henderson County, who was the state runner-ups last year. Correct. And they only beat us by one. Correct. So, yeah, look, I, I got, I'm you know, again, I'm going to schedule my schedule like this because I have full confidence in, in my pitching staff. Well, and let's also, I mean, just to hash something else out while we, we're talking about your pitchers, both good hitters. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and both really put the time in uh, to hit behind the plate. I know Maya, super pumped, you know, very energetic person, loves to hit. Yeah. Colbank last year – Started the season hot as fire, Coach. Yeah, she was on fire, yeah. I mean, hot as just unreal. Yeah. You know, um, but, you know, it's a great problem to have. Yeah. Um, the season is, man, fast approaching. Um, we are going to do updates, uh, you know, weekly. We're going to talk about everything. Um, we hope to be able to interview Coach Butts when we're down in Caldwell. Uh, as well as, you know, the Mercy Triangle when uh, Henderson comes to town, as well as Great Crossings. I would love to have a minute to talk to Coach Troutman. Uh, and, you know, we'll see. We're going to try to work it out. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions or, or you um, have a story you would like for us to get into, especially once the season starts, uh, we would love to hear about it. Yeah. Um, Coach JB and I are also really looking to hear from people that have used the new ghost. Yeah. Uh, Coach JB and I have, uh, you know, we we just were not trying to, like, knock companies, right? So we had a problem with Easton with, with the bat, uh, you know, a couple years ago because it broke so much. Right? Yeah, it broke Coach? a lot. Yeah. This one is supposed to be formulated differently, let's say, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're not, you know, if they're going to try to improve their product, Coach JB and I'd be more than happy uh, to talk about it. So if you have used the new Ghost or, um, you know, our initial, what we have heard from one or two players, Coach, is it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that, that that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. So I would just like to, you know, get get some feedback on it. Yeah. Because I, I, I haven't seen one. 
I have not had one at my practice. Correct. I have not had one in my facility yet. Correct. So I would just like to get a little feedback on it. Mm -hmm. Is it inloaded? You know, yeah. uh, what, what's the weight of it? Yeah. Um, you know, some things like that. So if you know about that ghost bat, you know, and I've tried to look it up and read on it. Of course, they don't tell you whether it's inloaded or not. They're not going to disclose that, I guess. But I've tried to read on it, and I can't find it anywhere. But, you know, and the reason I ask about if it's inloaded is because I have some kids that are smaller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they just can't control an inloaded bat. Right. You know, it tumbles through the zone. It drags through the zone. And you yeah. don't want bat drag through the zone. Yeah. So that's why I ask. Um, but, you know, the other thing, too, is I've been working with a new product in the facility mm-hmm. um, that was that I had gotten. And I'm kind of excited to talk about this. I don't have it with me today, but I'm going to bring it next week. Yeah. Because one of my kids has, like, used it in the facility Mm -hmm. and went home and bought it. Mm -hmm. And she says it's a game changer. Right. Like, it has literally helped her swing through the zone tremendously. So I'm excited. I've, we've been using it quite a bit in there with the team and some other kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to come in here and talk about it. Uh, this company actually reached out to this player's dad and was like, where'd you hear from hear about us? At? Right, right, right. You know, and so he gave them my name and told them who I was and that I have a hitting facility. And so they were talking about bat, bat tracks. And they were talking about reaching out to me and talking to me about it and, you know, what kind of feedback am I getting from it. But I'm going to tell you, um, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. In, in another product, and, and we'll bring it in next week and talk a little more more about it, uh, a product that parents like me who don't know a ton about uh, the, you know, the mechanics of the swing itself can take it home. You can show them how to, how to work it, how to – and then it's not it's not a big deal. No, it's super. It's it's simple, stupid, right? Yeah, it's about getting reps, and yeah. it, and it allows you to get reps the proper way. Correct. So no, yeah. it, it was pretty. It's pretty good. And my my players, yes, her swing is changing. Yeah. This kid is uh, she's hitting the ball pretty good. Yeah. Um, but super excited about the season, coach. I know I've said it. Uh, we look forward to having people out to mercy. Uh, for our games we look forward to seeing you on the road uh make sure if you see us out and about that you say hello because coach jb and i really appreciate it and it keeps us going um on twitter x i'm at day in the fan ky he is at ky coach underscore jb our email is coach in the fan at gmail.com uh, we also have some softball talk hats left uh, if you would like one reach out to us we will get it shipped to you in the mail um, Coach, did I miss anything today? No, but I do have to give a shout out to one of my girls because I told her I would. Yep. Um, she plays for Kennesaw State, Macy House. Yes. Opening college day, and this kid's been hitting with me for years. Yeah. And I was so excited. Her dad sent me the video, but opening college day, her dad texted me and says she's batting fifth today, Coach, in the lineup. Oh, and I boy. said, Oh, okay. So, two hours later, he sends me a video. She goes yard, two yard, two two run bomb opening day. I am so excited for that kid. Yes, uh, she works her tail off. Um, and again, you know, she, she's a kid that, like Ava, did all that stuff. Yes, strength training. Yes, hitting, catching lessons. Yes, nonstop. Made the path herself. I, you know, I can be honest. I don't even think she ever went to a, and I might be wrong, she'll, and she'll correct me, but I'm not so sure she ever went to a, a dance at her school. Wow. Because it was all she softball was or nothing. In, locked in. And that's why she's playing D1. Yeah. And, but yeah, big hit. I posted it on my page. Yeah. Dude, she. She crushed that ball. Absolute monster mom. Yeah, so I want to give her a shout-out, dude. I'm so excited for her and her dad and and mom and family because, hey, she deserves it. Yeah, absolutely. Macy, congratulations to you. Keep hitting them. We'll follow her throughout the season. And hopefully we can get her on the podcast, Coach, and get her feeling about, hey, okay, this is where I went in college or high school. I made it to college. This is what I would have done differently, or this is what I would have done to to keep it better, to get better than I am now. Yeah, and she would be a good one to bring on too yeah. because Macy actually went D one in California. 
Ah, did awesome. not did not like it and j- jumped in transfer portal. So I would like to ask her how that actually worked. Ooh, yeah. And then Kennesaw picked her up. So here's what we're gonna do. I need everybody to go to Coach JB's Twitter at kycoach underscore jb. Um, watch Macy's home run, retweet it, and then comment on there. Hey Macy, come on the podcast uh, because we will have to talk to her about that. But I think that would be great. Yeah, to get her opinion on. Well, and also so she can share it to these kids that are going to that level that, hey, if you get there and you're not happy and it just wasn't what you thought, Mm -hmm. there there are options. Yeah. And and it does pan out for some kids. Yeah. Some kids that don't. Yeah. They jump in a transfer portal and Mm -hmm. they just get lost. Yeah. And don't make it. So, you know, hey, but she she's thriving dude dude shout out to her yeah way to start out right hot right out oh, of the box yeah. man as a coach no oh, dude, I <laughs> dude was that's a great yeah. feeling you know yeah. uh last chance fort walton beach bash, beach bash we have harrison county lafayette lancaster ohio johnson central and marshall county simple cupcake schedule down there in florida mercy has two scrimmages mead county caldwell county both in the very beginning of march coach it's been a great podcast i'm super excited about the season um i know your players are excited get through monday get through tryouts and then the work starts and uh and then we can get busy so yeah and you know the other the last thing too is if uh you actually want to follow uh along with mercy softball this year yes yes um we actually stream our games yes you can go to the uh, game changer yeah. Uh, it's Mercy Varsity Jaguars. If you find that, you can request to follow, and you can actually watch our games. Yeah, uh, because we stream them all. So you want to become a fan of the Jags and uh, see how we do against all these big teams? Yeah, um, follow along. Yeah, and we would greatly appreciate it. It doesn't cost any money at all. Um, it's Coach. Do you have a emote like an icon on there for the yeah. team yet? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's when at you the go top to, there. When you go to Mercy, so you have to click on 20, 2024 spring season. Yeah. Can I see it, Coach? Yep. Um, yeah, and it's just Mercy Varsity Jaguars. You'll see it. Right now it has a yellow softball, but Coach will put the power in, in yeah. there at some point. Um, and it has our entire schedule listed on there. Uh, and then when we go, when we play a game, it will go live. It will send you an alert. And then you will be able to watch it. Now, you don't have to, like, watch the – you can click back and forth, check the score, whatever, but it gives you real-time exact updates mm-hmm. as to how the game's going. We greatly appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything, and the app is called Game Changer. And we will try to leave some more info out there. Um, Coach, softball talk, we've done it again. Yep. Uh, look forward to next week. We are, will have a special guest in the audience for us uh, to chat with. Uh, make sure you send any questions in. The Ghost Bat, uh, any feedback on that. Macy Howes, if you could retweet Coach's tweet uh, about with her home run, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and, yeah, we'll stay on top of the news. Make sure you send us any if you have it. Absolutely. If you have any if you have any thoughts or whatever on the young lady that chose to go play for a travel ball team versus yes. a high school. Yes. You know, Hey, throw some comments in there. Yeah. I'd like to hear what you all think about that. Exactly. And I think that's coach. That's, that's this, you know, that we can all put our thoughts together and talk and, and kind of have an, you know, a general idea or understanding of what's going on. And like we said, or you said earlier, coach, there's two sides to every story. Yeah. And so maybe something else happened. Yeah. But best of luck to that kid. Uh, Thank you all for watching, Coach. We will see you all next week on Softball Talk. Absolutely.